Hello students, welcome back to Edipedia Word Videos. My name is Niyati Said and thanks for watching Edipedia Word Videos. My topic for the presentation is 11th section of the chapter Transport in Plants. In this section of the video, we will be discussing about the mechanism of phloem transport and that is by the hypothesis or by the model pressure flow. It is the most accepted mechanism which is used for translocation of sugar from source to sink which is called as pressure flow hypothesis. Students, I have already taught you about the source and sink in my previous section of the presentation. So you can refer to that for better understanding. So herein we will be focusing on the mechanism of phloem transport and that is pressure flow model. So this is the most accepted mechanism which is used for translocation of sugar from source to sink which is called as pressure flow hypothesis or model. Students as we know that source is leaf right and sink is you can say any storage organ uh, like seeds okay root can also be a sink. So this is our source cell which is leaf here in this case and this is the phloem. This is the sieve tube element of a phloem which is a cell of a phloem. This is another cell of a phloem which is called as sieve tube element and they both are interconnected with each other. So from source cell it moves to the sink cell. As glucose is prepared in the leaf which is called as source and it uh, prepares its own food by the process known as photosynthesis. So it is converted to a sucrose which is a disaccharide and it can move from one sieve tube element to another sieve tube element through sieve plate. So this is sieve plate. I have already taught you about the structure of a phloem in my previous section of the presentation so you can refer to that for better understanding but herein I'll be focusing mainly on the pressure flow model okay so the sugar is then moved in the form of sucrose in the companion cell companion cell is this one see this is sieve tube element and this is companion cell which is in close proximity with each other close association with each other so the sugar is then moved in the form of sucrose in the companion cell from leaf to uh, companion cell and from companion cell to the sieve tube element okay then it moves to the living phloem sieve tube cells by active transport that means from companion cell sucrose moves to the sieve tube element which is this by active transport that means it requires expenditure of energy for the movement okay so this process of loading at the source it produces a hypertonic condition in the phloem that means sucrose when it gets transported from source cell to the companion cell and from companion cell to the sieve tube element then this condition of a phloem becomes hypertonic and water in the adjacent xylem it moves into the phloem by osmosis that means as you can see that this is xylem vessel and water uh, in the adjacent xylem it moves into the phloem see this h2o it is moving inside the phloem by the process known as osmosis so as osmotic pressure builds up the phloem sap will move to the areas of lower pressure which is the lower sieve tube elements so from here it will move till here okay and then it will move from here to here and then it finally goes to the sink cell which is this this is companion cell, this is companion cell, this is source cell and this is sink cell, okay. So as the osmotic uh, pressure it builds up in the phloem, uh, it will, phloem sap, it will move to uh, areas of lower pressure and the, at the sink which is this, osmotic pressure must be reduced. Again, active transport is necessary to move sucrose out of a phloem sap and into the cells which will use the sugar converting it into energy starch and cellulose i hope it is clear to you now as sugar are removed from the sink cell okay as sugar are removed the osmotic pressure it just decreases and water moves out of the phloem and it goes to the xylem vessel element that means remaining water it moves from phloem to the xylem 
to summarize the movement of sugar in a phloem begins at a source where sugar is loaded or actively transported into sieve tube element which is this then loading of a phloem sets up the water potential okay as you can see this is the water potential which is represented by this sign uh, so it sets up the water potential gradient that facilitates the mass movement in the phloem okay so from here it moves here from here to here and finally it goes to the sink cell so phloem tissue it is composed of sieve tube cells which form a long column as you can see that it forms a long column with the holes in their end walls which is called as sieve plate so this is sieve plate which has holes in it or pores in it uh, that allows the movement and cytoplasmic strands it pass through the hole in the sieve plate so forming a continuous filament so this is uh, it forming a continuous filament as hydrostatic pressure in the phloem sieve tube increases see this is the hydrostatic uh, pressure that is being increased here see here it is uh, minus 0.8 and here it is minus 1.1 so as the hydrostatic pressure in the phloem sieve tube increases pressure flow begins and that is our main topic that is pressure flow model and this pressure flow begins and the sap move through the phloem as you can see this uh, arrow it is representing the phloem sap movement meanwhile at the sink which is this okay it uh, incoming sugars they are actively transported out of a phloem and removed as complex carbohydrates okay and the loss of solute it produces a high water potential in the phloem and water just passes out from here to the xylem vessel element and thus it returns eventually to the xylem okay so this is about it so this is the flow which is driven by an osmotically generated pressure gradient between source and a sink source is what it is uh, sugar which is uh, synthesized in uh, leaf and they are actively loaded into the sieve element companion cell complex so this is sieve tube element and this is companion cell and this is the complex of sieve tube element and companion cell so this is called as phloem loading so phloem loading it always occurs at source whereas uh, phloem unloading it occurs at sink so this is the sink cell from here it goes this sugar which is represented by this uh, red dot it moves from here to here so that's why sugar is unloaded here and that's why it is called as phloem unloading okay and translocation is thought to move at one meter per hour okay this is the water potential uh, in source tissue energy driven phloem loading it leads to a build up of sugar i repeat in show source tissue energy driven phloem loading it leads to the build up of sugar as i have just taught you and that it just makes low solute potential that causes a steep drop in water potential and in response to this new water potential gradient that forms water enters sieve element from xylem that means from xylem it catches water and thus water enters sieve uh, tube element of a phloem okay thus phloem turgor pressure increases so this is the uh, sieve tube element of a phloem wherein turgor pressure just increases and that pushes the sap or phloem sap to the adjacent sieve tube element which is this so in sink tissue phloem unloading leads to lower sugar concentration see all these sugar molecule it is going to a sink cell okay so here a phloem unloading is taking place and thus phloem turgor pressure is decreased because it has moved to this sink cell so this is the turgor pressure which has got decreased but uh, it makes a higher solute potential and water potential just increases water leaves phloem and it enters sieve sink sieve element and xylem and this phloem turgor pressure decreases thus okay so the translocation pathway has cross walls it allow water to move from xylem to phloem as you can see this is the xylem and this is phloem and water is moving from here to here and back again 
see this is going back again to the xylem if absent pressure difference from source to sink would quickly equilibrate okay and water is moving into the xylem by bulk flow no membrane are crossed from one sieve tube to another and solutes they are moving at same rate as water water movement it is not driven by pressure gradient please note that and not water potential gradient okay so you have to memorize it now we'll talk about the phloem loading how from where do the solutes come from say triose phosphate which is formed from photosynthesis during day it is moved from chloroplast to cytosol cytosol is a uh, you can say uh, cytoplasm okay so triose phosphate which is formed from photosynthesis by the process known as photosynthesis by which uh, plant make their own food during daylight and uh, this triose phosphate is moved from chloroplast to cytosol okay so this is our companion cell this is bundle sheet cell this is cell wall and this is the mesophyll cell this is through which plasma meta they are connected with okay so at night this compound together with glucose from stored starch it is converted to sucrose which is a disaccharide and both these steps they occur in mesophyll cells which is this this is the mesophyll cell wherein at night time triose phosphate together with glucose from stored starch is converted into sucrose and these steps they occur in mesophyll cells and then sucrose then moves from mesophyll cell via a smallest vein in the leaf to near the sieve element of a phloem which is known as short distance pathway only move two to three cells that means from here it moves to here or from here to here and here that's it so this is known as short distance pathway of phloem translocation in a process called sieve element loading sugars they are transported into sieve elements and companion cells okay companion cell and sieve tube element they are in close proximity and sugar they become more concentrated in sieve element and companion cell then in mesophyll cells i repeat sugar become more concentrated in sieve element okay and companion cell then in mesophyll cell so this is the sieve element this is the companion cell this is phloem parenchyma cell which is uh, the type of a phloem parenchyma cell is transfer cell or intermediary cell this is bundle sheet cell and sugar is transported from this uh, mesophyll cell to here to another mesophyll cell which is a main site of photosynthesis and then it moves to the bundle sheet cell which is this then it moves to the phloem parenchyma then to companion cell and finally it reaches to the sieve element okay uh, so once in a sieve tube element companion cell complex sugar they are transported away from the source tissue which is called as export and translocation to the sink tissue is called as long distance transport so this transport is called as long distance transport because it is not confined only to three cells it can move from here to here okay movement is via either apoplast or symplast i repeat movement of phloem sap is via either apoplast or symplast i have already taught you about the apoplast and symplast in the first section of the chapter transport in plants so you can refer to that for better understanding okay so uh, via if you see via apoplastic pathway then it requires active transport against its chemical potential gradient and it involves a sucrose and um, h plus symporter a symporter uniporter uh, i have already taught you in the second section of the chapter transport in plants you can refer to that for better understanding as you can see that this is the symporter that allows h plus uh, ion and sucrose uh, from the here to here so that's why it is called as symporter okay so it involves sucrose h plus symporter and the energy dissipated by proton which is h plus proton is h plus uh, moving back into the cell is coupled to the uptake of sugar okay so this is how it is apoplast and symplast the symplast pathway is where water moves between cytoplasm of adjacent cell however apoplast pathway can only take water a certain way near xylem 
the Kasparian strip forms an impenetrable barrier to water in cell wall and water must move into a cytoplasm to continue okay so now we'll talk about the symplastic uh, phloem loading okay so it depends on plant uh, species students and dependent on species that transport sugar other than sucrose and it requires the presence of open plasmodesmata which is a connecting link between two different cells in a pathway and dependent on plant species with intermediary companion cell i have already taught you about the types three types of companion cell in uh, my previous section of the presentation you can refer to that for better understanding okay so well we talk about the companion loading or uh, uh, symplast phloem loading so from bundle sheet cells glucose fructose and sucrose um, see this fructose and glucose which forms sucrose it is formed here in the bundle sheet cells or to be more precise from mesophyll cell then from mesophyll cell it enters the bundle sheet cell and then it moves to the intermediary cell sucrose along with galactose it forms raffinose and raffinose it just enters the sieve element so in some plants sugar move from sugar producing cells into companion cells and sieve tube elements via plasmodesmata so this is uh, symplastic phloem loading this is sieve tube element this is companion cell and this is sugar producing cells which uh, you can see that this is the sucrose i hope it is clear to you now and phloem loading is a specific uh, for uh, different plants you can say okay as a result of a photosynthesis uh, the sugar such as sucrose produced in a mesophyll cell it moves to the sieve tube of a smallest vein of leaf directly or through only two three cells depending upon the leaf anatomy okay so this is symplastic phloem loading sucrose which is synthesized in the mesophyll cell it diffuses into intermediary cell which is this and then it finally reaches here sieve element here raffinose is synthesized so question arises where raffinose is synthesized it is synthesized in intermediary cells uh, due to larger size it cannot diffuse back into the mesophyll can you uh, see that is it diffusing back to the bundle sheet cell no but it can move from here intermediary cell to sieve tube element which is this okay so raffinase and sucrose they are able to diffuse into a sieve tube element which is this so as you can see that this is the longitudinal section of a phloem sieve tube and this is the bundle sheet cell and uh, this is the sieve tube element this is the mesophyll cell and from here mesophyll cell glucose along with the fructose it forms sucrose so this sucrose it moves here which is intermediary cell galactose uh, also just diffuses to the intermediary cell and sucrose plus galactose see this is galactose and this is sucrose along with galactose and sucrose it forms raffinose raffinose it just diffuses to the sieve tube element of a phloem so only raffinose and sucrose they are able to diffuse into sieve tube element students there are three steps of phloem unloading uh, we have uh, studied about the phloem loading now will study about the phloem unloading students it occurs in the consumption end or which is also called as sink organ such as developing root tubers reproductive structure etc and sugar it moves from sieve tubes to receiver cells in the sink that involves following a step such as sieve tube unloading which is uh, you can say that in this process sugar imported from source it leave sieve element of sink tissue okay and second is short distance transport the sugar are now transported to cells in the sink by short distance pathway i've just taught you about the short distance pathway which has also been called as post sieve element transport now we'll talk about the third uh, step and that is uh, storage and metabolism finally sugar they are stored or metabolized in the cells of the sink as with the phloem loading process sucrose unloading also occurs through symplast via plasmodesmata or through apoplast at some point 
en route to the sink cell and phloem unloading is typically symplastic in growing or respiring sink such as meristem root young leaf etc in which sucrose can be rapidly metabolized so young leaf it act as a sink until their photosynthetic machinery is fully developed and at which point they become sources now uh, we'll see how phloem unloading takes place via symplastic and apoplastic pathway so it varies greatly from growing vegetative organs such as leaf tube root tips and young leaves to the storage tissue such as root and stem to reproductive organs so first we'll talk about via symplastic pathway it appears to be a completely symplastic pathway in young dicot leaf and it again moves through open blastmodesmata see this is symplastic phloem loading unloading sorry so this is symplastic unloading this is phloem unloading pathway from here it moves to here from here to here and finally it reaches the sink cell okay so this is symplastic uh, phloem unloading it appears to be completely symplastic pathway in young dicot leaves and it again moves through open plasmodesmata now we'll talk about the apoplastic uh, pathway phloem unloading there are three types of students first is a one step transport from sieve element companion cell complex to successive sink cell that occurs in the apoplast and once sugar are taken back into the symplast of adjoining cell transport is symplastic so this is how it is the students see this uh, arrow this uh, arrow it is representing vicular pathway which is also called as transmembrane pathway this uh, zigzag arrow it is representing what symplastic pathway and this is apoplastic pathway from here it moves to the here here okay like this so this is ho how it is three pathways of a water movement as i told you that apoplast has uh, three types of phloem unloading first we have studied and now second is that it involves an apoplastic step which is close to the sieve element companion cell as you can see this is apoplastic phloem unloading which is taking place here and both involve movement through plant cell wall see this is the plant cell wall which is represented by this gray color okay so what's the summary students pathway of translocation sugar and other organic material they are conducted throughout the plant in a phloem by means of sieve element okay and sieve element they display a variety of structural adaptation that make the well suited for transport now what's the pattern of translocation obviously from source to sink now what is source so material is what sucrose here it is translocated in the phloem from source which is usually a mature leaf and it moves to the sink which is root or immature leaf okay so this is the pattern of translocation that material it just gets translocated from source to the sink materials translocated in phloem translocated solutes they are mainly carbohydrates sucrose is the most common translocated sugar and phloem also contains amino acid protein inorganic iron or plant hormone rate of translocation uh we'll talk about the rate of translocation average velocity is 1 meter per hour so the movement in the phloem is rapid well in axis of rate of diffusion okay see this is the summary i'm telling you that this is the source cell which is a physiological process of loading sucrose into the phloem uh, so this is a source cell which is leaf and thus it loads the sucrose molecule which is represented by these uh, green dots it moves here and finally it reaches here and finally it reaches to the sink cell and this is uh, done by pressure flow model uh, which is the most accepted mechanism used for translocation of sugar from source to sink which is called as pressure flow model or hypothesis wherein phloem and xylem they are coupled in an osmotic concentration system so this is xylem this is phloem and they are adjacent to each other that transport sucrose and thus it circulates water see the remaining water of phloem it just reaches to the uh, xylem so this is how it is and 
then uh, sucrose it enters the sink cell which is a physiological process of unloading sucrose from the phloem into the sink okay let's see a summary once again uh, students so uh, this is the pressure flow process which is the most accepted mechanism for translocation of sucrose sugar from source to sink which is called as pressure flow process and uh, source is the area or it refers to the area in a plant that stores or uses sugar okay so this is the leaf here the main area of production is in the mesophyll of a leaf this area it contains cell with plenty of chloroplast which perform photosynthesis remember that photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide water and light energy in order to make sugar and oxygen okay so from here sugar source it reaches to the sieve tube element of a phloem which is this so this is the source cell here uh, sugar it reaches here and uh, water also reaches here but it fetches phloem fetches water from xylem okay which is a conducting tissue it fetches uh, water from xylem and it thus reaches here and finally it reaches to the sink cell sink it refers to the area in a plant that store or use sugar generally sink they are growing root stems and fruits and sugar is needed for area uh, for for energy in these location so that cells can grow and develop excess sugar is stored in sink such as root so this is the build up of a pressure at source and thus release of a pressure at sink that means at sink pressure is released that causes source to sink flow that causes source to sink flow and at the source phloem loading causes high solute concentration uh, and that's why water potential decreases this y represents water potential it decreases so water flows into the cell increasing hydrostatic pressure and at sink this water potential is lower outside the cell due to unloading of sucrose here unloading of a sucrose takes place that means from phloem uh, all the phloem sap just enters the sink cell that's why uh, water potential is lower outside the cell due to unloading of sucrose so osmotic loss of water it releases hydrostatic pressure and xylem vessel it recycle water from sink to the source see this is the remaining water here in the sink cell it reaches to the xylem vessel and this process it just or this cycle just goes on and on and on so this was uh, all about it in my next section of presentation will be studying about the simple experiment that shows phloem is the tissue which is responsible for translocation of food and transport takes place in one direction that is towards the root this experiment was uh, ca it can be performed by you easily okay so this was all about it thank you and stay tuned